Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Morning Coffee with me, your host, Claudia Hove. In this episode, I will be joined by a very special person, Henry Omni, who some call a veteran, a seasoned veteran of this Morning Coffee show. <laughs> but you. more formally, he is our managing director for GFC Strategy at Mitra Tech. Wonderful to have you, Henry. Claudia, good to be on the morning show again. Uh, good to be with you for the first time. That's true. So let's go back to the roots. How do you drink your coffee? Or maybe How do I tea? drink my coffee? Well, as I say, I, there was a time where I drank far too much coffee. So being English and being in London, um, yes, uh, I do try, try to drink, drink tea. Um, my first coffee today is normally a flat white, um, but then I'm a double espresso man all the way. And even late at night, it doesn't affect my sleep. I heard. Bizarrely. <laughs> I heard. Bizarrely. All right. So today we want to talk about uh, regulations. And we obviously know that there is almost every day a new regulation coming out. Uh, there's more and more of them. But I think the more interesting aspect is that the scope and the impact of those regulations sometimes seem local, but turn out to be rather global in their nature. So effectively, it's no longer important where your headquarters are, but it's more important where you run your business. So what are your observations on this? Uh, yeah, before I address your question, I guess um, I think my observations are that regulators tend to move in the same direction. Um, generally at different speeds, um, so they are reacting to uh, different threats, uh, different ways we work. I mean, COVID has massively changed the way we work, so there are, there are new uh, new attack vectors, new things we need to consider when we're looking at that. But um, certainly we've seen some of that harmonisation. If you look at the Ops Resilience um, agenda, so SS1, SS2, uh, uh, 2021, DORA, uh, there's proposed stuff, CP230 down in Australia. Um, I guess the interesting thing about those, uh, which is starts to come onto your question, which is, you know, because they are about resilience of a firm, you know, if you're a global firm, you can't just apply those um, uh, or just comply with those regulations locally. That does affect your global business and that affects the policies and procedures um, that, uh, that you have and the way that you work. Um, I guess a very good example of what you're talking about um, is the German Supply Chain Act, for example. Thanks for um, mentioning that one. Sorry? <laughs> Thanks for mentioning well, that well, one. <laughs> well, I'm going to keep it close to your home, even though we, we, took, we, took, you out of, we took you out of Germany <laughs> to do a coffee show, but uh, I thought I'd bring it back home again. Um, for those who don't know, I mean, if you are either headquartered, or, but that doesn't go to your point, but if you have an operation in on Germany, uh, as of the 1st of January to, um, 2023, I think it is, uh, if you have 3,000 employees in Germany, you need to comply with that. So, it's, you know, so if you're Microsoft, Google or other big companies, the fact that you have an operation of that size there, so you may go, oh, that's OK. No, unfortunately, the bar gets set a little uh, higher or lower, depends where, where you look at it, from January 24. That's, that's reduced to a thousand um, uh, employees, um, and you know this. This is looking at ensuring there is no slavery within your um, within your supply chain. The obligation is for you, the board, to make sure you've got a, the, the right regime in place, and also like all these things, the consequences. Fines are not insignificant. Um, I just need to check my notes here, but it's you know I think it's um, depending on the violation, it could be up to 8 million euros. But if your company turns over over 400,000 uh, euros, it can be 2% of your turnover. So a bit like GDPR, it's proportional yes. to the size of your operation, um, what mitigants you had in place. So this is just something, you know, it's an example to, to your point, your question earlier, which is, you know, Whilst I see the harmonisation of regulations, you know whether it's you know whether it is cyber, whether it is resilience, you know, the the regulators do move in lockstep, lockstep. But now those teeth are coming. You know, if you are operating in jurisdiction, the fact you're not headquartered there, you will still have to comply. Um, yes. So yeah. So, so the the fines that will be the result of this eventually will have to be seen. I mean, you know, it took quite some time for GDPR to be effective on that. So we obviously know that you know it's one aspect to sort of achieve, monitor, and report on that compliance within mm. your organization. Mm. But then I think we've also seen some shift in the past couple of months where the full value chain is much, much more important over time and also compliance in that full value chain. So some call that extended enterprise, you can call it third party mm. risk, vendor risk, supply chain risk management. It's essentially the same thing, more or less. Mm. And um, beyond taxonomy, have you seen any good examples where this was managed well? And if so, what do you think were the differentiators there? 
So um, I think uh, I, I think where we see uh, firms that have done well, um, that's where there is maturity in that regulation. So they are the regulators are providing those those guardrails um, uh, as as it is. Um, uh, for firms to to comply with, I think um, where firms have done well um, is they do have a formal, and you've said it, TPRM um, uh, program or people responsible for that. Um, where I see firms not doing so well is if that vendor risk management, that uh, the responsibilities for those vendors still remaining within procurement. And that's nothing, uh, that's not being um, uh, uh, rude to, to our procurement colleagues, but it, it's a very different process. So TPRM is an ongoing process. Procurement is normally a one-off, we get you in. Um, and also, if you think about that procurement process, that you know, you, if you do that well, which a lot of people do, that involves multiple people within your organization. And to maintain that is a, is a discipline. And typically, the procurement departments don't, are not given the funding to do that. So it, TPRM can remain within procurement, but alarm bells in my mind ring when you say TPRM is just a procurement function rather than a standalone. Um, so I think that's, that's the genesis, I think, of a high level of where you see what things um, at an organizational level, trying to get that right. Um, I think, you know, go back to what I said earlier, I think the... the the fact that that extended enterprise, people recognising that extended enterprise exists, um, but not all not all vendors are equal. So we need to have proportionality in the way we deal with people. So you know we need to have a proper tiering process. Um, we need to have the appropriate controls based on the tier tier of that. Um, for our higher risk vendors, um, you know we we should be. Or, sorry, rebind. We should define a cadence mm-hmm. so that we need to be assessing them against. For the higher risk vendors, yes, we're going to be. We should develop a relationship with them. You know, they should. There should be a partnership. You know, the fact that, and again, not being derogative to someone who's supplying us uh, office supplies. Yeah, that's fine. That's important. But you know, if you're supplying, um, you know, for a bank, your ATM software, we need to have a very good relationship with that client, uh, to, with that supplier. We need to make sure that we. We ask them lots of questions. We 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 get we will assess uh, that they are still uh, meeting that they're still their standards still are still up to uh, the standards we expect from them. But we should also then in the modern world there are third party um, providers that provide real time information. So we can start looking at their financial status. We can start looking at their their cyber status. All that information is available. We can ask them about it. But we can double check that against information that's available in the marketplace. Um, as you know, within a line, you know, a lot a lot of the information that we ask, uh, we ask for evidence of controls. So people will send us documents showing that their policies, evidence of that. Um, that can be quite laborious for our third party uh, uh, vendorous people to, to have to review. We can use technology to, uh, to be able to provide summaries, to be able to highlight, you know, if I've got 100 documents from, from, from one of our vendors, which, which ones of those don't seem to be quite meeting the requirement that we have. So there's a number of, it's a broad brush, I think, you know, for me, doing looking at that extended enterprise well means proportionality. Um, it means that we uh, that we define the appropriate cadence and make sure that we hold those vendors uh, to task and make sure they are meeting our requirements. And and I think what that leads to is we should always think of a retirement plan. What happens if one of those vendors doesn't meet the requirements? And obviously, you know, the partnership we went, we hope hope that will never happen. But we should plan yeah. for life without that put that vendor. Which happened a couple of years ago um, when Russia invaded Ukraine. A lot of people went. We will not deal with any technology company or companies that had an association mm-hmm. with Russia. So very quickly, even though they were great partners for us. We need to we need to move away from them, yeah, and there are scenarios that we can't think about that we need to think about as part of that program. Yeah, so it almost seems like we are supposed and have to extend our understanding of our business also to include our third parties, regardless of clients. I mean, you know, KYC procedures are still out there as well. Mm. So clients, um, business partners, and also vendors ultimately. Yeah, and 
uh, when we were talking this morning about this, you know, it, a lot of what the regulators say is common sense. So, you yes. know, they shouldn't be needed, but common sense sometimes is not that common, needs to be written down. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I mean, you know, the, the, the reality is, you know, when I started work, um, you know, we went to server rooms and looked at these <laughs> server rooms and, and, and we could see all our kit and that defined what, what we had. Now, we don't have any server rooms. We know we're outsourcing to third parties, to uh, cloud providers, and therefore those are all part of our network. And uh, the regulators are very, very clear. The fact you you outsource to someone or you take a third party service, you they they you need to be sure that they are conforming with the standards that you set yourself. So yeah. the obligation to us, and that's why those third party vendor risk programs are so important. Because yes, um, it's not just looking internally, it's looking externally as well. Absolutely agree. So I would probably summarize that there is two different dimensions, almost like different axes, right? So there is the aspect of local versus global regulation. What mm. is impacting you? Is it where you do business or where you're headquartered? That's the one dimension. The other dimension is it's not going to be just my organization, but it's going to be extending across various other related parties, so to say. Mm. So maybe to wrap this up, um, and then no, we still can't predict the future. We still don't have a crystal ball here. Not I can't see any. <laughs> well, what would you say? What are the three top three things that organizations should watch over the next couple of months? Months, mm, probably. Let, let's extend that to the you know, ne next, next year or so. I mean, I think if, if we want to go three, I think continually, as we described, the, the reliance on third parties, that extended enterprise, I think resilience will always be, won't be far from the top of the agenda, and and top of that agenda will always be um, the, the cyber threats. Um, I think the interesting one, which we've always been predicting, um, is ESG. You know, the we, we're seeing more and more people talking about that. Um, you know, we are starting to see the EU's what is it C C C S triple D C S triple D yes Does, that has now now that that's that's starting to put some some ESG reporting requirements in. So I can only see that growing over the coming years. Um, and then the interesting one, which if you'd asked me two months ago, wouldn't have been on the top of my list, was uh, generative AI. Um, I don't think we know what risk that 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 affords us. But actually, more importantly, what's the opportunity? So yeah. like all, everything we've talked about here is, is we've evolved our organizations because there's an opportunity to, in, to engage with technology. It's enabled us to do more with less. Um, generative AI will certainly do that. We will then have to build those frameworks around it to make it um, safe to use an organization and get the benefits for it. Yeah, so um, sounds pretty much like we will continue to analyze, implement, monitor, and report on compliance regulations, but maybe our tool set will change over the next couple of months. That's to be seen. Absolutely. Thanks so much for, for these valuable insights, Henry. It's been a pleasure to be with you here in London. Yeah. Also, thanks to you, our audience, for tuning in today. Um, please make sure to, to subscribe. Jesus, what a word. Please make sure to subscribe, <laughs> subscribe. to our channel <laughs> to not miss any of these episodes. And also, if you're interested in understanding how technology can help you achieve compliance and report on compliance, make sure to use the links below this video. Thank you so much, and see you soon. Thank you, Claudia, <laughs> and thank you all for joining us. Bye-bye.